And in this video, we're going to be talking about the square root property and completing the square. And so we start this off with if b is a real number and a squared equals b, then a equals plus or minus b. And this is because if you take the square root of something or you take a number and you square it, it's going to be it times itself. So this is saying that 5 squared equals 25 but also negative five squared equals 25. So either of these two answers could give me 25. So if I instead was given 25 and I took the square root, I'd have to account for both positive five or negative five because either could be a valid answer. Okay, so you gotta remember that when you're working on these, anytime you apply the square root because it's equations, if I do something to the left side, I can do it to the right side. So it's okay for me to say that r squared equals five, and I'm gonna take the square root of both sides as long as I do it to both sides. But when I do that, I get the square root of r squared, which gives me r equals, I have to account for both plus and minus square root of five, the positive and the negative. And I would say that this is the set that contains five and negative, or square root of five and negative square root of five is the set of solutions to this answer. So just like with normal equation solving, you're gonna wanna solve all the way for x or x squared if you can, and then do your square root property. That should be towards the end of your step. So for this problem, I'm gonna add 48 to both sides. I'm gonna get four x squared equals 48 divide by four, divide by four, I get x squared equals 12, okay? Now I have an x squared equals 12, I need to take the square root of both sides and I get x, x equals plus or minus square root of 12. And now in 10.3, I think it was, we were talking about breaking down square roots, so we need to simplify this if we can. And this one can, right? Because we can write 12 as the square root of four times the square root of three. Square root of four breaks down to x equals plus or minus two radical three, okay? Um, so again, looking at another one, 50, uh, three says three x plus 54 equals zero, minus 54, uh, and this one would be the set that contains two radical three and negative two radical three. Okay, so back to three, we would do three x squared plus 54. We take 54 away from both sides. I get three x squared equals a negative 54. Divide by three, divide by three, I get x squared equals a negative 18. So I already have a negative and I'm gonna take a square root so I know automatically that my answer is not going to be a real number, right? Square root of x squared just gives me x equals square root plus or minus the square root of negative 18. So I want to break this up into plus or minus square root of negative 1 times negative 18, which gives me x equals plus or minus i radical 18, but 18 could also break down. So I get x equals plus or minus i radical 9 times radical 2, right? Because that would give me 18. I multiply into the radicals there. So x equals plus or minus three i radical two, okay? So please make sure you're writing your steps out, take your time, you're less likely to make a mistake. So four changes it up, it looks a little bit different. Now we have a binomial squared. So we actually can't move anything that's inside this binomial until we take the square root. The first thing we can do is the square root because it's something squared equals something else, and that's our goal. We want to, when we're trying to do solve it with the square root property, we want something squared equals something else. So now I can just go ahead and take the square root of both sides, which gives me 2x minus 3 on the left, because it just cancels that squared, equals plus or minus radical 18. Okay, um, I take 2x minus 3 equals plus or minus three radical two, because if you look at the problem before, right, that was 18, that's what it broke down to, plus three, because now we gotta solve for x. So I get two x equals three plus or minus three radical two, divide by two, and that's my answer, right? Um, and it's the set that contains three plus three radical two divided by two, 
and 3 minus 3 radical 2 divided by 2. I cannot simplify this. I cannot combine these 3s because this one has a radical 2. It's like a 3 and a 3x. Those two do not combine. It just stays like at number 5 here. We have the square root of the left side because, again, it's x minus 3 squared. So that canceled out my square and the square root of 25. So x minus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 25. Now, 25 is a perfect square. We need to go ahead and break that down into x minus 3 equals plus or minus 5. Now, I do plus 3 to both sides. And x equals 3 plus or minus 5. And sometimes people will stop here and they lose points because this is actually solvable. All I do is take x equals 3 plus 5 and x equals 3 minus 5. And I actually can get two numbers for this answer. 3 plus 5 would give me 8. 3 minus 5 would give me negative 2. So my solution is the set that contains negative 2 and 8. Please make sure if you break all the way down to numbers that you actually finish solving it. For 6, we have 3k plus 1 squared equals 2. Again, we're going to take the square root and take the square root. We get 3k plus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of 2. Minus 1 minus 1, I get 3k equals a negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 2. Divide by 3, divide by 3. K is equal to the negative 1 plus or minus square root of 2 over 3. Again, it cannot simplify or anything like that. The solution set would be negative 1 plus square root of 2 over 3 and negative 1 minus square root of 2 over 3. The set that contains these two answers, right? So now we're looking at skill completing the square. And uh, we're starting out here with this idea of completing the square. Um, we're going to kind of step you into it. We start out with just um, finding the B ter or the C term using this. And when I say that, I'm thinking of AX squared plus BX plus C, right? When I say the B and the C and the A, this is what I'm referring to. And our goal is to try to get something squared. So you see they kind of have that set up for you over here because our goal is to have it to be factored and be something squared. And so generally I try to think about this using that perfect square trinomial idea. Um, if you remember that way back in module three, I think we first learned about that. Um, we're looking for something that gives us a perfect square trinomial. So it gives us like a x plus three squared or you know x plus four squared, something x plus 1 squared, something like this. And so basically what we're going to do is we're going to create that using the information that they give us. And what we have to do in order to do that is we start with our b term, which is 12. And we're just looking at the number part of it. So we're taking our 12, and first thing we got to do is divide it by 2, okay, which gives us 6. And then we square it, which gives us 36 because I would say x plus 12x plus 36 is now a perfect square trinomial. And it's a perfect square trinomial of the form x plus 6, okay? Um, if I took x plus 6 and I squared and I multiplied it out, I have x plus 6 times x plus 6, right? A foil, I have x squared plus 6x plus 6x plus 36, I get x squared plus 12x plus 36. See how I got the same thing? This is my goal. I'm trying to find what number gives me this perfect square. Um, it's a little bit tricky when you're first getting used to it, but uh, it's the same steps every time. So you're gonna divide it by two, your B term is gonna be divided by two, and then you have to square it. But you always need your A term to be equal to one. If it's not, then you're gonna have to divide by everything by that A term in order to make it equal to one. So for this part of it in 11.1, .1, we're just getting comfortable with this idea of what are the steps that I would follow. I would divide by two and then I would square that. Right, and then I write the factored form as my squared, but it's a perfect square trinomial, so it always factors back to whatever it was after I divided by 2. So for the next problem, I have negative 2 divided by 2, 
which gives me negative one, and now I'm gonna square that, which gives me a plus one here, right? Negative one times negative one is a positive one. So when I write my factored form, though I have t, and I use this one, the one before I square it, minus one is what goes in my factor. I need both because when we're actually solving equations, I need to know what it was I added over here and what does it factor to. So this is, again, just about helping you get comfortable with this idea. So for the next one, m squared plus 5m, I want to take my 5, divide it by 2. So this one doesn't divide perfectly. It's just going to be 5 over 2. I'm going to square it. If you remember um, exponent rules, you get 5 squared over 2 squared, which gives me 25 over 4. So that's what I would be adding here, and my actual factor would be m plus 5 over 2. It's before I square it is what goes into my factor. Last one is negative 2 over 3. Now I'm going to have to divide by 2, and this is ugly. It's a fraction divided by a fraction, or a fraction in a fraction. Um, but if you remember fraction operations, we do negative 2 over 3, we do keep change flip right talked about this several times keep change flip so i do negative two over three i keep that when i change from division to multiplication and i flip my two is technically a two over one i flip it to one half logically this should make sense to you because i'm dividing by two or i'm multiplying by half i'm halving it so then I multiply straight across, I get negative 2 over 6, right, which is equal to a negative 1 third. I want smaller numbers, so I'm going to go ahead and simplify. And then I square it, which gives me a 1 over 9. Okay, so that's what I'm adding here, 1 over 9. My factor is x minus 1 over 3.